Hello and thanks for watching. In this video, I'll be updating my walkthrough of the Office Retail Industrial Rent Roll tab, or the ORI Rent Roll tab, in my all-in-one model. Now, this tutorial I initially made many, many versions back, and so this is an update both in terms of what has changed on the ORI Rent Roll tab, uh, but also in the model as a whole. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, when you download the model, you'll come here first to the versions tab, and this will tell you uh, what version you're using, and you can come here to the change log and see what changes have happened since this tutorial. Uh, next, you'll go to the summary tab, and here is where you're first going to start. Uh, in order to have access to this ORI rent roll tab, you'll need to be using either an office, retail, retail, or an industrial property type. So let's just toggle here to industrial. And as soon as we change the property type, you're going to see along the bottom here your uh, worksheets change. And now this ORI section appears, and specifically this ORI-RR or ORI rent roll tab is going to appear. So I'm going to come here to the ORI RR tab, and the first thing you're going to notice is uh, there's quite a bit grayed out. You're going to notice then a few tenants, ha uh, dummy tenants have been included with the model. And then across the top here, an assumption section, followed by our rent roll first gen tenant section. And then out here to the right, you're going to have a rent detail. And then as we continue to the right, you'll find uh, unpaid leasing costs for the first gen tenant expense reimbursement assumptions for that first generation tenant. And then as we continue to the right, uh, future tenant assumptions. And those are assumptions for second and third generation tenants. So let's f first start in our assumption. So uh, you will have a, a certain number of tenants. And when I say tenants, that includes both uh, in-place tenants, contract tenants, as well as space that is uh, unoccupied. We call that spec space. And and so let's imagine you have three in-place tenants and then you have two additional spaces that are vacant. You would then have five tenants. And when you change this to say five tenants, what you're going to see along the bottom here now is we have one additional tenant line that appears. Now it's very important that we fill in any excess cells. Uh, otherwise, the model may air out. You, you see this here, right? There's an N, A, an error there. We come to the ORI offset tab and you see all these errors. And that's normal, that's expected because we haven't completed this next tenant. And so don't, don't be alarmed by that, just ensure that, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I have these dummy tabs or these dummy tenants up above is so that you know which cells must be filled in. So uh, I, I enter five tenants, I'm going to first enter the suite, suite 500. I will choose whether this is leased or spec, and we'll say this is spec. And then I'll enter the tenant name, and, and in this case, we'll just call it vacant space. Then we have a tenant label, and this really doesn't do anything, um, but it can be used for your own analysis. So by default, I just simply enter common, but Let's say that you have low floor, let's imagine that, I guess this is an industrial deal, so it's less important, but let's imagine this is an office deal and you have low floor, mid floor, and high floor tenants. And you may want to do some additional analysis at some point on a separate tab. And you can identify what type of tenant this is. And then say, sum up the uh, square footage by tenant or calculate the uh, occupancy by tenant using this tenant label column. So that's why I have this here. Uh, next, we have the square footage of the tenant. So here we'll say 25,000 feet. Uh, then we have the contract initial start date. And this is when the tenant is assumed to take occupancy. Uh, now, if there's a free rent period, what I recommend is uh, well, they take occupancy and begin to uh, reimburse the landlord based on the reimbursement percentage, which we'll talk about in a minute. And so if you have a tenant structure where they take occupancy, there's a period of free rent, but during that period of free rent, they are reimbursing the landlord for their pro rata share of reimbursable operating expenses. 
then you'll want to put this contract initial start date to be when they take occupancy, even if they have a free rent period. And I'll show you in a second how you then account for that free rent period. Uh, if during their free rent period, they also are not responsible for, for their uh, reimbursable operating expenses, then I recommend putting the initial start date, the date when they begin paying rent and begin um, reimbursing the landlord. So uh, in this case here, let's assume our tenant take, takes occupancy. Actually, let's come back here to the summary tab. Our analysis start date is June of 2020. So let's imagine that six months later, they take occupancy. So I don't know, 12, 1, 2020. Okay. So six months until we can lease this space up. And then let's say that it, we're going to assume for this vacant space, a, a five year lease term. So I can either just manually calculate this, right? So if they're starting December, they're going to end November of 2025, 11, 30, 2025, or I can use an EO month formula, right? EO month takes some start month and date and then it jumps forward in the future, in this case, 59 months. And the result is it gives us the last day of that date jumping forward 59 months or November 30th, 2025. And then we have the option, uh, we have the ability to add options, all right? And we assume if we add this, that that option is exercised. Uh, if if you don't believe the option will be exercised, then enter zero. If you do believe it'll be exercised, enter the number of months included in the option. So here we have a five year lease. Let's assume that there's an another, there's another five year option, just one of them. So we enter that here and then we leave the second option as zero. And what this does, then it assumes that that option is taken at market rent. Okay. Uh, then we put our, so then we have contract end with options, and you can see that here. Uh, this is uh, effectively 120 month lease now, or a 10 year term. There are 10 years remaining. Then it asks, what's the annual rent per square foot? Uh, and, and here we'll put, I don't know, $14. This tells us what the annual amount is, what the monthly amount is. Then we have the rent increase method. Okay. so. We can select either an increase as a percentage per year, increase as a dollar amount per year, or we can detail out the rent increases. And if we detail it, what appears off to the right here in this rent detail section, and if this is hidden, by the way, you'll see here at the top, you can unhide it by clicking this plus sign, or you can hide it by just clicking anywhere along this line like so, and that hides that. So if you, if you don't have any tenants that are detailed, you can just go ahead, go ahead and hide it. Otherwise that plus sign will open that up. And by default, it gives you a flat rent across the whole period. Also, by the way, it, uh, it will automatically show only those years, those lease years that this tenant would have. So for instance, I could come back here, remove the option and it will no longer show those option years, right? Let's go ahead and add at the option. Then what this does now is we can manually enter our rent. So let's imagine that the rent bumps aren't a percentage per year or a dollar amount per year. Let's say that uh, it's only at the option. And uh, so it's $14 flat through the end of year five. Then in year six, which is the beginning of our option year, it uh, jumps by $2.50 per square foot or to 1650, all right? And from 1650 out to the right. And this is then how we model, we custom model an option uh, a rent. And, 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 and so, or, or again, we could toggle back to increase the percentage per year and then it all, any of that rent detail that we did is, is gone. But let's go back to detail. We detailed the rent. Now let's continue to the right here. If there is any unpaid leasing costs that uh, you are expected to pay, those would be included here. So let's imagine that scenario where uh, your initial start date was uh, at the beginning and there is some rent free rent period 
uh, you might enter you, or you would enter that free rent here under concessions. Um, if the tenant begins and then there's a few months where the, the tenant is supposed to be paying rent and there were, and the, you as a landlord are recovering op uh, re reimbursable operating expenses, then you would enter free rent here. Uh, next we have expense reimbursement. You know, we have the option either to detail out expense reimbursement percentage. If you hit toggle that to yes, then we come up here to this plus sign, open that up. And in a similar fashion to how we, uh, detailed, um, our, uh, rent changes, we can detail the reimbursement percentage. Now, one of the things that I've done in this model uh, to reduce complexity, um, it, it, at the, at the, the, you know, at, at reduction in precision, we also reduce complexity. I've used this expense reimbursement or recovery percentage assumption. So for instance, if I choose no detail, uh, then I would set a recovery percentage and I say 100%, that is a triple net lease, a true triple net lease where the tenant is reimbursing the landlord for 100% of the landlord's operating expenses related to the property. Um, if we say put 0%, that would be a gross lease, a true gro gross lease where the landlord is paying 100% of all operating expenses. Um, and then some blend of that, let's imagine that uh, you have a triple net lease, but uh, there's some slippage in your operating expenses. You can't get all of it reimbursed. And, and what you find is roughly 90% is reimbursed by the tenant. You'd put 90% here, but let's, let's say a scenario where uh, maybe early on the first five years, you're expecting 90%, but then you believe that you can get a full 100% by uh, year six through 11, you might detail that out. And in this case, this tenant will reimburse years one through five, 90% of its reimbursable operating expenses, uh, based on it ha having a pro rata share of OPEX of 22.7%. Um, and then in starting in year six, it reimburses 100%. Now the, the last thing I want to mention is this pro rata share of operating expenses. So this says, okay, let's say there's a hundred thousand in operating expenses, reimbursable operating expenses in a given year. The, this tenant then would be responsible for its pro rata share based on its, uh, uh, the amount of space that that tenant occupies in the building. So here, the very first tenant is responsible for 36.4% of operating expenses. The, the new tenant we added is responsible for 22.7%. However, there are situations where a tenant might be responsible for a greater or lesser share of OPEX. And in that case, you can change these orange font cells, which if you recall are um, optional inputs, you can change that cell for whatever its um, atypical share of OPEX expenses are. So we've detailed out expense reimbursement and we've now completed our first generation rent modeling. However, we have future tenant assumptions, right? So these are assumptions for tenants that come after our, after our first generation tenants, second generation and third generation in, in this particular case. And these are things like TI, uh, tenant improvement assumptions, leasing costs, assum uh, leasing commission assumptions, free rent assumptions. Uh, we also have a market rent uh, assumption and the market rent is, is the rent that we assume these new tenants will be, um, paying in its first year of, of occupancy. Um, and then we also have, uh, contract rent increases. So once those tenants take occupancy at market rent, their rent will grow at some rent uh, at some rate that may or may not be equal to market rent. Uh, we also have the reimbursement percentage, uh, for, uh, each of these tenants. Uh, we have a renewal probability, uh, a lease length and some downtime assumption between each. So let's, let's go down, uh, let's go through each. So new tenant improvements, this is the rate. So if, if the tenant vacates, the first generation tenant vacates, second generation tenant takes occupancy, this is the tenant improvement package that would be offered on a per square foot basis or a per meter basis, depending on whether you choose a square feet or, or meters on the summary tab, uh, that would be charged or that would be offered to the tenant paid by the landlord. If the tenant renews, 
that first generation tenant renews, it would be say $10. Uh, then we have our leasing commission. So on a, on a new tenant, it would say six and on a renewal tenant, let's say four, uh, free rent offered, let's say three to a new tenant, one to a renewal tenant. And then the market rent, uh, there's a dummy formula here that just simply grabs the, the contract rent rate and assumes that's market rent. But uh, you, as the user, must come here, look at this, confirm that this is market or not. So, for instance, we might say, okay, this the market is actually $14 across all of these tenants. So some tenants are slightly above market. Some tenants are slightly below market. We're going to put market here. And then that market rent will grow at some rate. Uh, we'll just assume that market rent grows 2% per year. But you may be in a, in a market where things are, are depressed right now and and so maybe you go okay there's we don't expect any market rent for two years but then following that we think there's going to be a uh you know maybe a one percent growth and then two percent but then it's going to catch up and we're going to have a four actually three percent from month 61 and on and so that is how you can custom change your market rent over the the analysis period and then we have some contract rent increases per year. Let's assume that each uh, subsequent, each future tenant will, in its contract, agree to 2% bumps every year. The leases will be triple net. Let's assume a 70% renewal probability for each of our tenants. Uh, lease length for this tenant of, I don't know, 84 months. And then downtime, let's say six months between tenants. And so with all of that done, we can come back up here and we can look at a few uh, metrics. So the first is we see our lease square footage versus vacant and our physical occupancy. Uh, we see what our, our total net, uh, net rentable area is and then any square footage unallocated. So by default, this is simply linked to here, but if for, since, for instance, you were modeling out you know, 37 tenants, you might come in and drop in what your total net rentable area is, and then you start modeling out each of your tenants, and then you can come out, come back and see if you've missed, this is it's like an air check, basically. You can come back and see if there's any unallocated square footage yet. But in this case, there isn't because this is just linked to our total. Uh, and with that, any errors that we had, they're gone, right? And you can find then, so uh, this, these assumptions flow into the ORI calc tab. And if you want to go back and look at the back end, you just simply come to the summary, come to your calculation tabs under navigation, toggle those to show. And now this ORI calc tab will appear. And this shows first a summary of your first generation assumptions. And then over here to the right, what you're going to find is each of the cash flows as they're modeled. So for instance, we can look at market rent. If you want to see what market rent looks like, you just click that button and then you can find market rent as it's modeled. Now, if you recall, we said no uh, growth in market rent for the first couple of years. And you'll see that now, no growth. So you can just come in and review that and, and get a feel for how the cash flows are working. Another one is maybe first gen rent. So you can see the rent for each of these tenants and you can review that. So that's the ORI calc tab. Again, there are no assumptions made on this tab. This is, these are the calculation modules that are being done here. So this is your ORI calc tab. And then you can see it summarized on your ORI opstat tab. So the monthly gross potential rent Here's your rent values. You can also see your expense recovery income. That's based on that uh, expense reimbursement percentage assumption on the rent roll tab. And so here we go. We're tracking gross potential rent. We're tracking here expense recovery income. And that is where the ORI rent roll tab flows into your ORI opstat tab, uh, which in turn flows into uh, your property cash flow tab where, where uh, returns and things are calculated. So with that, that is the ORI rent roll tab. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, otherwise, thanks for your time today.